watching horror movies so cheesy. Yeah. The ones that will make you feel queasy. Yeah. The ones with directors so sleazy. Yeah. Lots of gore to some more, it's real easy. The ones with the giant mosquitoes. Yeah. Where can you find man eating bunny toes? On a cheesy horror movie burrito. Cheesy horror movie burrito. Cheesy horror movie burrito. Cheesy horror movie burrito. What up, everybody? So glad you're here. It's Coolio with the flow back in your ear. Alright, so I'm not Coolio. You can call me Kendall. And welcome to a cheesy horror movie burrito. YouTube show where we look at some of the cheesiest horror movies ever made. And we talk about them. Uh, right off the bat, I want to thank the folks at LaRock Creations for this mask. This is an awesome mask. You should check out their website. I've got the information below. Now, this is how my mask came. Completely white, and I was able to paint it myself. I'm not much of an artist. So this is what I can do. Maybe you can do better. Why don't you go ahead and check them out, get your mask, and pop it on the Twitter, and let's take a look at it. All right, folks, today we are going to talk about one of the worst movies ever made. I mean, without a doubt, this is really bad. Nail Gun Massacre. Uh, 1985 horror film directed by Terry Lofton, and this is definitely one of the worst films ever made. In fact, got the box art here. Oh! This is a really bad movie, but in a way that's kind of good. Uh, you'll see what I mean as you watch the video here. Uh, but really, this movie makes Troll 2 kind of look like Avengers Endgame. Uh, but guys, check it out. This is an ultra-low-budget, paint-by-the-numbers slasher film from the 80s. Just cashing in on that slasher craze going on at the time. So sit back, relax with Kendall. And let's take a look at Neil Good Massacre. Okay, so let's get into the movie, and the first thing we gotta talk about is the god-awful music that it costs your ears. I mean, take a listen. Yeah, that goes on for like two minutes. I don't know what's more ridiculous, the fact that this movie has an original music credit, or the fact that the credit belongs to a man named Whitey. Well, apparently for Whitey, all you need to make music is a microphone and a synthesizer. While we're talking about sound coming from the movie, let's talk about the killer's voice here. The killer sounds like a mix of the announcer from Killer Instinct and Jeff Foxworthy. Well, you just pissed me off. Well, what do you think? Available for your home in 1995. Ah, beautiful, isn't it? The movie starts off with a woman being assaulted. Stay classy, nail gun. And then we cut to the killer. And if you're wanting more backstory, well, that's just too fucking bad because this is all you're going to get. And let's check out the killer. He, or she, is in camo head to toe with a motorcycle helmet on and a big ass air tank on her back. Yeah, because nothing screams stealth like a goddamn giant ass canary yellow frickin' air tank strapped to your back. I think this killer needs a new gimmick. <laughs> the first one to get it is a slob named Leroy. What the hell? Damn, she, you think this woman had me a shirt ready? Okay, dude, you seriously look like you've never cared about wearing a clean shirt a day in your life. So the killer just walks into the house, and look at the size difference between these two. Holy shit! This might be the most unintimidating killer in all of cinema history. I mean, seriously, the killer is like a foot shorter and 50 pounds lighter than Leroy. But Leroy just stands there and gets shot in the head. Oh, bitch, I said put that thing down! Oh my gosh, she must have saw a screening of the movie. Run, bitch, run! Now, hot on the trail of the killers are the town's inept sheriff and the town's doctor. Why the fuck is the doctor investigating the crimes? Is he also the town detective? And look at this fucking dude. Like, seriously? The only other main characters in the film are these... I, I don't know what the hell they are. Are they brothers and sisters? Are they in some kind of three-way relationship? Are the two guys in a relationship and she's like maybe their beard? I sure as hell don't know, but we got to take a second to check out the cashier in this general store. Please, please, just, just take a look. 169. Do 
Do you remember when you could sit outside and not worry about the mosquitoes and the killers? Dollar fifty nine. I bet you ain't never seen butterfly wild butterflies in these parts. Did you say that old lady's name was Old Lady Bailey? Yes, I've I've heard about that. I'm not really one to gossip, but uh, they tell me that some strange things happening down there. They found some dead bodies. Just. Uh, I guess you're gonna tell us that this um. Old lady lets people stay in this house for free, and then uh, sneaks down and kills them. No, she's probably just kind of old and run down, and uh, needs some spare parts. Oh God, really? Ready? I'm sorry. Stop. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, I need help. What in the fuck? Oh my God, this movie, this fucking movie. So some woman invites these three people uh, to live in her home for free so long as they repair it. Her name is Old Lady Bailey. And wait a minute, are these people homeless? Are they just drifting around from town to town? Now please, enlighten me. Who the fuck are you? So this movie really just introduces new characters just to have them killed off, usually in the next scene. In quick succession, we meet Mark and Brad, dead, the hitchhiker. Damn. I'm glad you stopped. This is the most godforsaken road I've ever been on. God! No! Please! Dead? This couple? Don't you ever think of anything else? What about eating? Dead? These women. Anybody home? Hello? Dead. However, there is one notable kill. Let's check in on these two at a daddy-daughter barbecue. <laughs> Where to fucking begin? First of all, how the hell do you hide in water? Like seriously, how do you hide in water? It's see-through, it's clear. Shit, and how is this even left in the film? Oh, shit, man. Meanwhile, the sheriff and the doc are just fumbling through town, cleaning up the mess made by the killer, and this is some serious sloppy-ass police work. I guess we should be dead about four or five hours. Trucker just radioed in. There's a man nailed down to the highway, about five miles from here. Follow me. Hey, hey, Jackie. What about what about her? Come on back here and get this this steel. Uh, don't worry about her. She ain't going nowhere. Did you guys notice the fucking fake ass nails in her face? Oh my god. So this foursome show up at old lady Bailey's house. They're looking for work, and they know that the uh, three amigos are fixing it up. Well, as luck would have it, the um, threesome aren't home right now, so what does the group decide to do? Well, they decide to have a picnic. Three of the four of them get killed off. One of them is trying to win an Oscar. <laughs> So eventually the amigos show up and call the police. What do you want us to do? Relax. Man, they're yeah, hanging no. off trees back there. Just relax, just relax. Let's check in on that sloppy ass police work. Goddamn. You said you and your buddy found him this morning? My report says they've been missing since last night. Just how come you waited till now to call? Hey, we did call last night. Your dispatcher said, uh, wait until morning. Said it was too dark to see. Like, how the fuck does that even work? Hello, police. I'd like to report that I found three dead bodies in my backyard, all shot up with nails. Dead bodies, you say? But look, it's too damn dark, so just call back in the morning. Alright, so you guys remember me telling you about how the movie opens with a woman being assaulted by a group of men? Well, that woman's name is Linda. While investigating, the sheriff apparently has a fucking epiphany because all of a sudden, you know, eight deaths in, he remembers that, hey, 
Linda got assaulted, maybe she's the killer. This may sound crazy, but at least six of the victims were employees of the Bellows Company. That's the same company that this little gal accused half the men of gang raping her when she delivered some supplies to one of their construction sites. What are you driving at, Thomas? I don't know the theory like old lady Bailey, I hope. No, let's just go out to the lumber yard and talk to this little gal. It just may be that she's taking the law into her own hands. It's serious. I've known Linda and her brother ever since I've arrived in town. So the sheriff goes and grabs a bite to eat while the doc confronts Linda like, what the fuck? So the doc and Linda believe that Linda's brother, Bubba, is the actual killer. And what luck, because here he is and the car chase is on. <laughs> Okay, now they've abandoned their vehicles and they are now on foot. The doctor is chasing behind the killer and right behind him is Linda. They're running around the dirt, their gravel, all the equipment at this construction site. The killer runs up the ramp and... <laughs> Linda pulls off the helmet to confirm that indeed it was her brother Bubba that was the killer. But at least the killing's over. Is it? Is it over? Oh God, they were planning sequels, weren't they? And with that, this nail gun nightmare comes to an end. Guys, I tried telling you, it was a bad movie, and it definitely is one of the worst films ever made. Uh, but also kind of entertaining to watch at the same time, like so bad it's good as I've mentioned before. So guys, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching my video. I definitely appreciate it. If you like it, hey, share it with your friends, subscribe, love to see that. If you don't like it, let me know what's up. Leave some comments below, hit me up on the Twitter if you have any suggestions for future films to look at. I would love to hear them. So again, this is Kendall. Thank you so much for watching me on a cheesy horror movie burrito and have a great one.